king. I say you are a king. I say you are a queen, whether the enemy like it or not. I stand here and I speak over you that you are a king and you are a queen. For your star has appeared. I want to welcome you to today's episode of Grace Today. My name is Dr. Edward Frimpong Kwachi, Senior Pastor of Faithway Baptist Church, Bryce, Ohio. I believe in my spirit that God is going to use me to be a blessing onto somebody's life. As you watch today's episode, may the Almighty God visit you wherever you are, and may the hand of God rest upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to minister to you that this very brief um, uh, topic, the audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. I want us to go into our Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, coming down. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It said, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gain approval. For by faith the men of old gain approval. By faith we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death, and he was not found because God took him up, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him amen for by faith for by faith for by faith for by faith abel offered sacrifice for by faith enoch was taken for by faith noah and his family members were saved so faith the audacity of faith Everybody and everyone in life needs faith. Because without faith, things can get very ugly. Without faith. So the audacity means you are facing some restrictions, some limitations. But you still have that confidence that I can break through and I can penetrate and I can get to where I want to get to in life. The audacity of faith. So faith is like a vehicle that will get you to your destination. 
all of us we have dreams all of us we have visions all of us we have missions i don't know about you but at least i know that i have one and i know that somebody also may have one but so the faith is a vehicle that will get you to where you want to go in life faith in the kingdom of god is like a currency that you use one man of god said it's like a currency that you use to buy things in the kingdom of god so faith is so important that without it it becomes very difficult so if you if you examine critically what we just read in hebrews chapter 1 hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 coming down faith in simple terms is to believe in something despite lacking any evidence for it you are believing in something even though you don't have physical evidence the tangible evidence that this thing is going to happen or this thing even exists but you still believe in it you have confidence in it you are so convinced you are so persuaded that truly is going to happen so the central future of faith is the confidence or trust the belief and in the in the in, in christianity the object of our faith is god the object of our faith is god and his promises because we believe that god exists and we believe that it is god who created the whole universe and we believe that god had power and authority and we also believe in the promises and the prophecies of God. So by believing and for leaning on those kind of things, then you are taking them into yourself. You are possessing them. I just want you to understand that faith, it brings about possession. Once you believe that this thing is possible, once you believe that this thing i can have it once you believe and you pray and you believe and you pray and you believe one day you possess it you see without faith bible says that it is impossible for any man to please god for any woman to please god so for you even to please god you must believe that he is he, he exists Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's do this Bible study. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. That God, one, exists, and two, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you must first and foremost believe that God exists. That you don't believe that God is just a magician or something that does not exist. That people are saying a whole kind of things about it. That, my friend, if you want to make it in life, let me tell you a secret. You must believe in something. And I want to recommend my God to you. That believe in God. Because when anybody that believes in him, Bible says that and that person will please him and that person will please him for you to please God you must first believe in him so that he become very happy with you and he become very happy with us hallelujah faith helps you to see things differently that others do not see if you are working with a person of faith, when things are very ugly, that person will tell you that we can overcome this. We can achieve this. It is possible. It's still within our scope. It's still within our jurisdiction. It's still within our strength. We have God on our side. If you read Numbers chapter 13, verse 23, 25 to 33 we've learned that when the children of israel were on their way to the promised land 
God told Moses that Moses sent spies, one leader from each family. Let them go and spy Canaan. I want them to see the land that I promised them. I want them to have a glimpse, just have a look, a little look at that city that, that, that is flowing with milk and with any. I want them to go there and just see the promises right in front of them, that land. So Bible says that, and Moses selected those leaders. They all went, they spied the land. And when they spied the land, they saw everything over there. They saw the beauty of the land. They testified that the land was truly flowing with milk and with honey. But when they came to Moses and the Aaron, and with the whole congregation, all of them except Joshua and Caleb, they testified that yes, truly, the land is very beautiful. Yes, truly, the land looks good. Yes, truly, we can see that this land is very, very nice. But they saw giants on the land. They saw the Anak. They saw the tallest, the strongest on the land. So when they went back, they told Moses, Aaron, and the whole congregation that the land is good, but we want you to know that we may never be able to, to, to conquer that land because the people who are sitting on the land, who are enjoying the land, the owners of the land, they are stronger than us. But Caleb, stood up and said, Moses, don't listen to them. Yes, it is true, but we have what it takes to conquer that land. We have God on our side to conquer that land. So Moses, don't listen to these people. Joshua said the same thing, but the people were very angry. The people persisted that truly they, they, they cannot. They will never be able to defeat the enemy. A man, a woman with faith, they see things that others do not see. They possess things that others fail to possess. They inherit things that others were unable to inherit. The audacious nature of faith will help you to see that even though things are not the way you wanted them to be, but because you have faith, Caleb said, we are able, we are able, I am here to tell you that you are able to take it. You are able to possess the land with God on our side. Caleb said, if the Lord delights in us, then you'll be able to take it. For the Lord already delights in you. That's why he created you. That's why he made you. That's why he called you. That's why you are his son. You are his daughter. He said we are able to take it. And Bible says that God became so angry and told Moses, he said, Moses, all those people who despised my instruction, who did not believe in me, who did not have faith in me, they will never inherit the land. They will never enter the land. Many people are unable to enjoy their inheritance because of their unbelief. If you can believe in the Lord your God today, the land is there for you. The territory is there for you. You can possess it you can inherit it you can have it you can claim it i believe that god will grant you that land caleb entered the land and he went to joshua he said joshua give me that land for which the lord our god promised me i want you to have faith in yourself and also have faith in God. Have faith in yourself and have faith in God. That God on your side 
you can conquer thousands. You can conquer ten thousands. You can walk and say that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Faith, it helps you to overcome adversities in life. Faith helps you, helps me to overcome adversities, difficulties in life. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they encountered Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar made that statue. And they said, everyone should bow before it. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego look at the king. He said, oh, king, we will never bow down to this thing. For we are serving a living God. And even if our God decides not to save us, we've made a conclusion that we will never bow down. We will never bow down. If you have faith, and if you trust in this God, you be very careful the way we compromise in life. Because many people are compromising because of lack of faith. Because they think that God is very slow. They've served God for so long that they are not getting what they laid presented before God. So they said, you know what? If this man has come my way, let me just take him the way he is. If this woman has come, let me just take him the way he is. If this person is offering me this kind of job, this kind of thing, then let me just bend the truth and just take it. That will not take you anywhere. It's just a matter of time. But those with faith in the Lord will stand for the truth and they will speak the truth even at the face of opposition. Even in the face of opposition. Even in the face of difficulties, they will still stand. Daniel said, I will not abide by this law because I am serving a God. And when they enacted that law, but we say then Daniel went into his room and he opened the windows and he began to pray three times a day that let what comes, let it come. He trusted in his God. And at the end of the day, when they threw him into the lion's den, he was able. His God was there, right in the middle, right in the lion's den. And God shut up the mouth of the lion, and they were unable to kill him. A person with faith who overcome adversities in life. I speak to you today, any adversity that you are going through, by faith in the Lord God, by faith in Jesus Christ, you overcome it. You will overcome it. You will overcome it. You will overcome that adversity. Because you are not believing in any man. You are believing in the Lord your God. The God that the dead could not overcome. He was buried on the third day. He rose again. He is the name in Jesus Christ. He is the one that you are serving. He is the one that I am serving. And he is the one who will help you to overcome the adversities. Because faith will move mountains. That thing that looks like a mountain. That thing that looks like you are, you are not going to be able to overcome it. Bible say that in faith. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. Jesus said truly. I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing 
I mean nothing. I didn't write the Bible. Jesus said nothing would be impossible for you. Is that the baby that you are looking for? Nothing would be impossible. If that, that business that we've been praying to God for, you've been waiting upon God for an opportunity for you to establish that business. He said nothing would be impossible I said for you. In that marriage that we've been asking God, praying, waiting upon him, he said nothing would be impossible I said before God. In that exams that we've been trying to pass, but maybe it has become very difficult. It has become a mountain in your life. He said nothing will be impossible with God. He said nothing will be impossible for you if you have faith. That mountain will disappear. That valley will be leveled. That darkness will leave you. He said nothing will be impossible. Is that that child of yours who is giving you a lot of headache? You've been crying to God for God to tight the heart of that child so that that child will become a child that you want. He said nothing is impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible. I want to encourage you that without faith, without faith, it looks like that ministry is not going the way you want it. He said, nothing would be impossible. It looks like everything is against you. Everyone is against you. But with faith in the Lord. He said, nothing would be impossible with God. He said, faith without works is dead. I want us to read James chapter 2, verse 14, coming down. James chapter 2. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works, can that faith save him? He said, if somebody claims that he has faith, and that person is not backing that faith, with works. Can that faith alone save that person? He said, if a brother or a sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed, and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith it has no works. It's dead, been by itself. So Bible is saying that if you have faith, you claim that you believe in God, and somebody comes to you, that my sister, my brother, I'm hungry. I need food. You say, oh, please, let us pray. You pray for that person, and you say, amen. But meanwhile, the person is just looking for food to eat. The person is looking for clothes, but you have money also over there. But you, you are telling that person that go in peace. May the Lord be with you. So James is saying that this thing that we call faith, it doesn't work that way. So your faith must be accompanied by words. You have to tell me that you have faith. And I will just tell you, but I will, I will just look at you and say this faith is either authentic, fictitious, or it doesn't hold, exist. Because we must back our faith, our words, our actions by our deeds. Let's continue. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works. And I will show you my faith by works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and saw that. James is saying that you believe that there is a God. He said even demons, they also know that there is a God. But the difference 
between you, between us and demons, is that we back our faith with action. We back our faith with action. We make a move. If I believe that I'll be able to do this thing with the help of God on my side, then I must make a move. I must take a bold step. By taking a bold step, I am trusting God that God will not abandon me in the pursuit of this vision, in the pursuit of this mission, in the pursuit of this dream. For God, you cannot sit down and say that you have faith without doing anything. That faith alone will not accomplish anything for you. If you have faith, make a move and the good God will be with you and your mission and your vision will become a reality in life. If you believe, shout a big amen. You say you believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? James chapter 2, verse 20. He said, faith without works is useless. You cannot tell me that you have faith and you are not willing to do what God has instructed you to do. You have a mission. You have a vision. But you are afraid. God told Jesus. He said, Jesus, do not be afraid. He said, make a move. For the Jordan River will be parted into two. It's up to you to make a move today. It's up to you to make a move tomorrow. It's up to you to make a move this year. That God will be with you. When Joshua made a move, the Jordan River was parted into two. And he was able to cross over and they possessed the land. If you make a move, you'll be able to cross over and you possess the land. When Jesus was about to be crucified, he knew what he was going to go through. But he believed that God will raise him from the dead. For he believed that Holy Spirit will raise him from the dead. If you believe and you make a move, God will go with you. When the children of Israel, they got to the, Jordan, the Red Sea, the Moses was afraid. He lifted up his voice and cried unto God. And God asked, he said, Moses, what is in your hand? God will use what is in your hand to take you to where you want to be. But when Moses stretched the rod over the Red Sea, the Red Sea was parted into two. You have to make a move. You have to make a step of faith. You have to take that step of faith. In that business, take that step of faith. In that ministry, take that step of faith. In that marriage, take that step of faith. And God will be with you. May God bless you today. May the face of God shine upon you. May the hand of God rest upon you. May heavens be open unto you. May the Almighty God supply you with all your needs as you begin the journey of faith that God will not disgrace you, that God will not disappoint you, that God will not fail you. I bless you and may you be blessed today and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you are watching me and you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. I want to recommend you to you. I want you to accept him and your life will never be the same. I want you to say this after me. That Lord Jesus Christ, today I confess all my sins unto you. I give my life also unto you. Please forgive me all my sins. Pardon me and come and live with me. Accept me as the way, the way I am. Come and save my life. May God be with you. Jesus Christ has accepted you and he will continue to preserve you. 
in Jesus' name. My name is Dr. Edward from Pongkwachi, the senior pastor of Faith Way Baptist Church. I believe that God has visited you where you are. I will see you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.